Hey internet friends, prepare yourself because we are about to accelerate right through one of the darker tales to ever shake the American upper echelon. A tale of money, sex, and blackmail. The tale of Jeffrey Epstein, told in five minutes. Brooklyn, New York, 1953. That's where Epstein's sordid saga begins. As the oldest of his siblings born into a Jewish family, Epstein reportedly had a natural proclivity towards mathematics. And even though he attended college, he never earned a degree. Lack of a degree didn't stop him from securing a job as a physics and calculus teacher at the private and exclusive Dalton School in Manhattan, where, at the time, Donald Barr, father of Attorney General William Barr, was serving as dean. Apparently, rumors of Epstein's mathematical genius caught the attention of Alan Greenberg, whose son attended the Dalton School. And Greenberg brought Epstein on as an options trader at his firm where he became a partner in less than five years before he left to start his own consulting firm. Epstein described his role as a high-level bounty hunter for his elite clientele. Eventually, his success allowed him to create J. Epstein & Co., a financial management firm shrouded in secrecy, only taking on clients with at least a billion dollars in assets. But why would billionaires hire a guy that no one's ever heard of to manage their finances? While rumors swirled that Rockefeller money was managed by Epstein, one of J. Epstein & Co.'s only public clients was Leslie Wexner of L Brands, which included Victoria's Secret under its corporate umbrella. Epstein became romantically involved with London-based Jewish socialite Ghislaine Maxwell, daughter of media mogul Robert Maxwell, who had died under mysterious circumstances a year prior. The British Foreign Office had suspected Robert of being a secret agent of a foreign government. Some said KGB, others said Mossad, given that Robert helped arm Israel during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. At the time of his death, Robert was under investigation for war crimes dating back to his years as a British Army captain. Regardless, Epstein's romantic relationship with Ghislaine began in the early 90s, and their friendship continued long after they had broken up. It could be said that these were Epstein's glory days, during which he amassed great wealth and expensive properties, weaving an extensive web of connections along the way, ranging from celebrities and scientists to world leaders and royalty. In 1998, Epstein purchased a private island in the Virgin Islands, Little St. James, and he was known for flying his friends there on his private jet, later nicknamed the Lolita Express. Island visitors included Les Wexner, Bill Clinton, Prince Andrew, Alan Dershowitz, and even Stephen Hawking, and other prominent scientists and researchers. Epstein's era of philanthropy seemed to suggest he held an intense interest in human development and artificial intelligence in that his generosity had no limits. But the question is, was Epstein financing these expensive endeavors with some of the most powerful people in the world? Or was someone else bankrolling his activities? Epstein's squeaky clean reputation took a hit in 2005, when his first victim came forward, with a woman reporting to police that her 14-year-old stepdaughter was paid $300 to undress and massage Epstein. This report opened a floodgate of accusers. Around this time, a lawsuit was filed alleging that Epstein had hidden cameras to blackmail prominent figures with underage victims. And the case was eventually transferred to the FBI. Alexander Acosta, serving as the US attorney for Southern Florida, basically gave Epstein the plea deal of a lifetime, allowing Epstein to plead guilty to only two state prostitution charges, requiring him to register as a sex offender and serve 18 months in jail, not prison. Epstein had a private wing of the jail to himself with his own private security detail, and he was permitted to leave on work release during the day. After serving 13 months, he was released on probation but was immediately allowed to fly to his private island. When Acosta was criticized for letting Epstein off the hook so easy, Acosta said that Epstein belonged to intelligence, implying he was above the law. Epstein's tarnished reputation took more beatings over the years, when a string of victims and former sex slaves came forward, claiming that Ghislaine Maxwell was a pimp and partner in Epstein's international sex trafficking operation. As recently as July 6, 2019, Epstein was arrested on child sex trafficking charges. And when FBI agents searched his Manhattan townhouse, 
They reportedly discovered evidence of sex trafficking with thousands of nude photos of females, some of them minors. In Epstein's safe, they found stacks of cash and a fake passport from the 1980s. And that's the story of Jeffrey Epstein in five minutes. The basics, anyway. So, internet friends, how about a bonus round of follow-up questions? Who benefited from Epstein's blackmailing operation of world leaders and prominent figures? Sure, the media has reported details of Epstein's trafficking, but have they told you explicitly what motivated him? Do you notice any similarities between recent news stories and the stories that dominated the 2016 election cycle? What is the goal of constant coverage surrounding the Epstein scandal when we've already established a pattern of little to no legal justice? Is the goal to normalize pedophilia? Is the goal to sway your vote in the 2020 election? Or is the goal for you to have no expectation of upstanding moral behavior from global leaders? As always, I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye!